Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee and you can find me at creativelyyours.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and super excited that you're joining me today for our paper crafting fun. Yay! Yay, 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 yay. So if you're watching this video when it premieres, I am live with you in the chat. And today is Tuesday, October 15th, halfway through October already. Crazy, right? Time just goes so fast, right? So what do I have going on? So many things. It is the last week to register for our Cultivated Creativity DIY Paper Crafting Kit. You can see a peek over here of the projects. Um, that we will be doing this month. So we are featuring the Sophisticated Sled Stamp and Die Bundle. Yes, we are. And I love that one. So today's project actually is the bonus card that I will be placing down in each and everyone's packet. Yes. So each month uh, we curate a wonderful kit for you. Um, with fantastic projects. You learn new things or you're reacquainted with some things you might have already known, but we want you to get the most out of your projects. So we want to show you lots of fun ways to use them. Um, and of course, I like to gift a little project in each and every kit. And so today's bonus card is what we're going to be showing you today. So lots and lots of fun. Um, let's see what else is going on. Oh, my goodness, one of the best promotions going on. Um, so there is a starter kit special. So if you would like to uh, get your products early, right, before they're out for the public. So right now we have a um, pre-order going on for some upcoming uh, online exclusive products, which are fantastic and you don't want to miss out on. But you can get yours now in your starter kit if you join my Diamonds team. This is a great way to get a discount on things, get things early, and be a part of a really close crafting community. So um, I'd love to have you join us. I give lots and lots of perks to my team. So if you have any interest, uh, you can find the information on my website or you can send me a message and I am happy to help you get started. I Again, I'd love to have you join us. But during the month of October, the starter kit's a great deal anytime. Don't get me wrong. But during the month of October, you get an additional $30 in free products. That's $155 in the product of your choice. And you only pay $99 and it's free shipping. Best deal ever. Best deal ever. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So let's see what else. Um... Yeah, if you want to stay up to date with everything I've got going on, join my email list, right? I send a tutorial bundle out every single month as a gift to my subscribers. Uh, yeah, it's a bundle of tutorials. So it's not one, it's multiple. And that happens every single month. And right now I'm also in my 12 weeks of holidays. So every Tuesday, I'm sending an additional email uh, giving you a project duo that you can create for each of the uh, seasonal holidays, right? So we've got fall, we've got some Halloween, of course, Christmas, there's some thank you, birthday, and even a Valentine's. So hopefully you'll join me for that as well. All right, let's switch over and get to our crafty fun today, shall we? All right, so as I mentioned, we are featuring the sophisticated sled stamp and die bundle with our project today. And this is the card that we are going to recreate. So this is a little bit of a fun fold, but super easy. And it's a gift card holder. So you can plop a little gift card right into this inside pocket and you've got some space to write. And fast, easy, right? All right, so let's get started with this one. Let me move these out of my way and we're gonna bring in our Simply Scored. Um, you could use your paper trimmer, but when I'm doing multiples, I like to use my Simply Scored. So I've got my card base. So this is seven and three quarters by five and a half. Now the complete supply list and cut dimensions are on my website. The blog post has already gone live. So you can snag those. Um, so I am scoring this at four and a quarter and six and one half, okay? And then while we've got this out, I've die cut a piece of blueberry bushel with the third largest of the countryside corners dies. And we're gonna score this one at three and three eighths. So let's kinda move our marker so that we don't mess that up. And we'll put this in. So it falls really up at the top of where that shape changes nicely there. Good deal. All right, so that's the hardest part that we're doing today. <laughs> None of it's hard. This is an easy, easy peasy card. All right, so let's start by folding up our card base on each of these score lines. And I want to give it a good crease 
on each of these folds, right? So we're gonna do that on both of those score lines because that's gonna create our little pocket right here. Cute? All right, so now I've got some designer series paper pieces. So this is from the, um, oh, I'm gonna say the wrong paper. The, it's winter. Oh, I've totally gone blank. You guys will remind me. Winter, winter meadow. Yeah, Oof. my mind went blank. So I am just going to adhere this. So this is five and a quarter by two inches. And we're gonna adhere this right on this front panel here. And then I've got another that's five and a quarter by one inch. And this is gonna go for the inside pocket. Now, if you're dealing with a directional print, you might need to double check when this is folded up that things are facing the direction you want them to be facing, right? Now, on the sides here, I can use tear and tape, I can use liquid glue, really whatever makes your heart happy. I think I am gonna choose to use tear and tape on today's project. So I'm just gonna snip off a couple little strips and it's okay that it's long. It's okay if it's a little bit shorter than the length as well, that's fine. You can do whatever makes your heart happy. Now, when you use tear and tape, be sure to rub that with your bone folder. It is a pressure sensitive tape and it performs much better if you run that bone folder along it. It's gonna have a better adherence and it's actually easier to get the backing paper off. Now you can see I had a little bit of extra cardstock that had stuck to that previously. It's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be hidden underneath there so it doesn't matter. I could sit and pick that off, but might have been more trouble than it's worth. And then I like to run my bone folder inside the pocket to get the pocket to lift up just a smidge, right? So hard part is done there. And then um, I'm gonna put this on, but I wanna get this strip of designer paper down first. So we, let's emboss our sentiment. So let me move some of these things out of our way. We're done with our tear and tape. So I've got a five and a quarter by half inch strip of the designer series paper. Let's bring in our Versamark pad and we'll grab our little buddy here. That's gonna help us not have all the loose bits of powder that wanders, hopefully. That's our intention anyway. And I'm just stamping good tidings. Now this is a pretty fine um, small stamp, so you don't have to put a lot of pressure and a lot of people tend to put too much pressure on small stamps like that. Um, but if you put too much pressure, then it, it kind of blobs, right? So you don't need much pressure. So I'm just gonna scoop up a little bit of powder there. And then we'll go ahead and heat up our heat tool off camera. So I just want it to get warm because it will emboss better if it's warm. So if I can grab that. So I hold it about an inch, inch and a half away from my paper. And I just slowly move it across as it melts the powder. You don't wanna over melt the powder. Um, it will go from a shiny melted uh, visual to kind of overdone burnt if you do it too long, right? So you wanna stop as soon as you see that melted. So nice, right? All right. So let's go ahead and put this down. Now you can use liquid glue if you prefer. This is a perfect width for my stamp and seal. So I am going to use my stamp and seal. And I'm using the folded edge of my um, layer here as a guide of where I'm gonna place this. So I'm just placing it right along that top fold. Cute. So then it's nice and straight on the inside and super cute when it's on the folded folded front here. All right, so let's add our little tab here. So I am going to adhere this actually to the back of the card base. So I'm gonna look and see where I want it. I kind of want my visual to be similar in distance here and here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I want that folded down. So that is actually adhering to the back of your card, right? So I'm gonna give that another good crease. Get that debris off there. So we've got that. Cute. 
Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, let's get our next element down. So I have die cut this shape with the Peaceful Seasons dies. I love this one. It's got lots of great little labels in it. And of course there's a Christmas. Um, so there, there is a bundle available with a wonderful word set that goes with this as well. So I love it, love it, love it. So one of my favorites for sure. Now I wanna go ahead and put this down and I'm gonna dimension this up. I want a little bit of height on here. So let's see if we can grab some dimensionals. Oh, my sheet's almost gone. So I know that I can easily put it far out on the edges there. Um, and then I don't want to go too far left to right because it's going to hang off the edge of my label that I've got that I've scored. So this is just in basic white. And we're going to lay it right here. And like I said, I'm going to try to center it left to right, top to bottom. Cute. And then we didn't have our adhesive go over too far. So that's great. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip this. I don't know about you guys, but when I get to the edge of my dimensionals, for whatever reason, I need to come in and clip the whole sheet so that I can use all these little bits. So don't throw this away. You can use 100% of the dimensionals on the sheet. They're just not the same shape anymore, but that's okay, right? They don't have to be that, that uh, I'm gonna say the wrong shape. Heck, it's not a hexagon because it's a six side. Um, but you know what I'm talking about, hopefully. All right, next, let's bring in uh, my stamp positioning tool. Now, of course, I'm using the Stamparatus. We don't sell this anymore, but um, I recommend the Misty if you don't have a stamp positioning tool. You will see on my website, I've got a My Favorite Things section, and there is a link so you can grab your own Misty. But because I make such a stack of the, I mean, I'm making 75 plus cards each and every month right now. So I um, find that things like this are super helpful to set it up on my stamp positioning tool. I can go ahead and die cut this. Like I can just die cut a full sheet of paper um, and I don't have to worry about lining it up. And then I can place it right here in my template, right? And then ink this up. I'm going to do Memento Black. Ink this up. And then close this over. And it's going to stamp right on my wreath, my die cut wreath. And this is so much quicker, right? I can do a whole bunch of these, one right after the other. And it's already die cut for me, right? Cute, right? I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So I can just run a stack very, very quickly through with that. A lot of people ask me about this as well. This, to me, it reminds me of an air hockey puck, but it is a pressure tool to use with your um, stamp positioning tool. So this is also listed in my favorite things on my website. So if you need one of those, you can grab one. Okay, let's do a little bit of coloring. So I've got quite a few Stampin' Blends markers here. So I have got uh, Shaded Spruce. Let's see, we got Shaded Spruce. Yep, I've got Blueberry Bushel. And let's see, Pretty Peacock. And I do have a little bit of Lost Lagoon as well. I don't know if I'll need the Lost Lagoon. We'll see how we uh, like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and color my berries first. I'm just gonna go all in with dark. I'm gonna use dark blueberry bushel and I'm gonna color in these little berries. Now there's not a lot of shading to be done with these. You could do it if you wanted to, but they're pretty small, right? So you don't have to do much with them. All right, so I got my little berries, they're blue. And I did them blue because it matches, it coordinates with my paper, right? So I want it to coordinate with that. So I did the dark blueberry bushel. You could do the light if you prefer. Or mix and match, right? All right, so now I want to take, I'm going to do my light, I think. We're going to start off with light, pretty peacock. Now, some of these leaves to me look a little bit like eucalyptus. So those are the ones that I am going to color with my pretty peacock. So there's quite a few different greeneries in here. Now, again, I could do a little bit of shading if I wanted to, but it's so small, I don't know that you need it, right? Let's see, I think I'm gonna call that a eucalyptus as well. Whether it's eucalyptus or not, I don't know. I'm not good with my plants. All right, so we've got that one colored in. 
Let's bring in, <laughs> let's bring in this sheeted spruce. Oh, I don't want to do dark. Let's do a little bit of dark in the bottom here. On these big leaves. See what we got. See what we like. Now, if I am going to do shading, I actually like to do the dark first. You know, you've got to figure out what works best for you. And then I will use my lighter color to kind of do the blending, right? So you can overlap the colors. And when you do that, you'll be able to blend those together a little easier. So it's not such a harsh line as you change colors. Now this is a small shape, so you don't get all kinds of wonderful opportunity to shade, but a little bit here. The bigger the image, I think the easier that is. Kind of pretty, super pretty. Just overlap that. So you guys, a fan of coloring or not a fan of coloring? Right? I'd love to know what you think. All right, so those are looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna take, go back to the dark and the skinnier versions of that leaf, I'm just gonna color them with the dark shaded spruce. So I didn't even need that uh, Lost Lagoon I have in here. You could, again, you could do it if you wanted to do a little more shading than I did. So pretty. All right, I think I got them all. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so just because I like a little sparkle, I am gonna take my Wink of Stella and these larger leaves that I did shade, I'm gonna add just a touch, just a touch of Stella, because I think that's so pretty. Just a little, just a little bling a bling, right? We love it. Love it, love it, love it. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's got a nice little sparkle to it. All right, so we wanna add this wreath right to our card front here. So let's grab our dimensionals. And I've got lots of little pieces I can use here from the edges of what I've clipped, which works out great, right? I'll take this backing paper off and get this one down. I love it, so cute. Right? Super, super cute. All right, let's do our bow next. So I've got this amazing sheer ribbon with the silver edge on it. And I'm using about 10 inches. I like to leave it on the roll, actually, when I tie my bows. So I make my two loops crisscross. One goes in the hole and back out. And I tie that loosely. So I'm going to pull this, hold the knot and pull the ends, right? and I can futz with my bow until I'm happy with it. Now this ribbon ties super easy. Um, so you can get a really nice bow pretty quickly without too much futzing. But it's entirely up to you on what you wanna do. So now I've got my lovely bow, so pretty. So let's glue that on with some glue dots or AKA boogers, right? Grab that. I think I'm going to do two just to make sure I'm nice and secure. And I'm going to place this actually just below the wreath. Just from a height perspective, it kind of gets that knot down in there. Cute, right? I love it. All right, let's finish it off with a couple of rainstones. And I love the rainstones because there's so many of them, right? It's one of our best embellishments, I think. I'll be so sad if Stampin' Up! ever gets rid of the basic rainstones because they are definitely a go-to. Um, and you can color them, you can change the color. It's They're fabulous. So on my original, I think I used all big ones. What did I do with my sample? I put it across the room. Yeah, I used all the big ones on this one. But you can use whatever size you want to. So on this one, I think I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna do little ones, right? Why not? 
put some little ones. And I think it's fantastic, whichever size. You can mix and match however you wanted to do it. But there you have it. So we've got our fabulous gift card, our pocket. Super easy. And you can change the prints. Here's another one I did. Um, pulling in another one of the prints in the patterns. And I combined it with Moody Moth. Now you could combine it with Cherry Cobbler. That would look fantastic as well. Um, and change that up. So I've, I've done the leaves the same. I've just changed my berries to Moody Moth here. And then switched some of the designer papers out. Cute. Do you have a favorite? Do you like the blue? Do you like the Moody Moth? Which one do you like better? But so many of the prints are great um, that you can try and use in this paper pack. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. And don't forget to invite your crafty friends to come over and join us for Tuesday for a little bit of a break. Right? We love it. So I hope to see you all again next Tuesday. All right. Bye for now.